Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Daniel, thank you for joining me today. And in today's video, we're going to discuss Raph Simmons' latest collection for Fall Winter 21. So let's get right into it, and you might want to consider grabbing yourself a drink because it's going to be a long one. At the end of Prada and Raph's Spring Summer 21 debut, a contributor posed a question to the design duo. Is anything authentically new anymore? Or is everything just regenerated? In which Raph responded with this. But I think when you are in it for a longer time, let's say a few decades, it's important to be able to refresh your own body of work. And in this video, he did just that. He refreshed his body of work. Uh, furthermore, during that same interview, the designers were posed with another question. What is the prada -ness? In the development of his first collection for Prada, Raph was compelled to dissect the Prada heritage and how he perceives the brand, and I think as a result was triggered to do the same with his own brand. What is the raf -ness? And the answer lies in this collection. Apart from that, 2020 marked the 25th anniversary of his namesake brand and the release of his highly anticipated Redux archive collection, forcing the designer to physically face, analyze, and reimagine his own body of work. This show did have a lot of similarities to the recent Prada shows in a way that allowed Raph to highlight his contributions to the Prada collection, such as the logo in between the shoulder blades, the models clutching the bags at their sides, the electronic music, the video editing and the various camera angles that capture the clothing in inventive ways, and the list goes on and on. So much so that I think I may have to make a separate video. In an interview after his most recent show, Raph said the following, The collection is about things I love, things I have always loved, that are always there in every collection, in the processes behind it, and the clothes. As far as the process goes, it's a bit hard for me to understand what in particular he's referring to that goes on behind the scenes, but in regard to the clothing and his collections, I'd like to delve into what tropes, idiosyncrasies, and traits he might be referring to. In the opening scene, Kraftwerk's radioactivity plays as a model walks down an eerie, backlit, sci-fi looking corridor, which ironically is located at an old cold mine, hence the selection of the music. Radioactivity was a continuous theme throughout the collection that is portrayed in the oversized silhouettes and elongated sleeves that imitate human deformities and transmogrified creatures. Moreover, one of his first shows in the late 90s shared the same name. Back in the 1970s, the band Kraftwerk used a custom-built vocoder to synthesize their voices, which turns out that the background set has an uncanny resemblance to the custom-built Kraftwerk vocoder. Is that a coincidence? Most likely not. The models wore these very tight-fitting hoods that resemble bicycle helmets that mimic Kraftwerk's Tour de France album, which depicts Bicyclist on the cover. The same album inspired this look that corresponds with the album colors, uh, but it seems like all of this collection shares a lot of the neon radiance found on Kraftwerk's album covers. And like I mentioned earlier, he made a reference to Kraftwerk in one of his first shows by drawing inspiration from their iconic stylized red shirt and black pant uniform, which was reworked into look number 32. In the first six looks, we have these huge oversized quilted puffers that hark back to his Virginia Creeper collection in 2002, where he showed several quilted puffers and vests. These looks also hark back to the Twin Peaks show in 2016 that featured enormous puffer jackets and sweaters with elongated sleeves, as well as later during his tenure at Calvin Klein 205 where he showed several puffer jackets. In look number three is where we first get a look at a black vest that kind of resembles the Margiela duvet coat from 1999. If you're unfamiliar with Raph, Margiela has served as a major influence in his work throughout his career. The reference is more obvious in look eight in this white cream color. It's also worth noting that it couldn't have come at a better time considering that a lot of the world is still hunkering down, staying home, and vegging out in their comfy clothes or blankets. 
We get our first look at the gloves in look number four, because we all know you can't be in a radioactive environment without a set of gloves. Gloves are something that Raph has repeatedly done throughout his career. For example, during his tenure at Jill Sander, Dior, and also at Calvin Klein 205. But this time he's opting for bright colored Angora that also resembles the gloves that we've recently seen in his fall winter women's collection at Prada. Look 7 features an oversized, presumably silk tunic with circles all about it. I might be reaching here, but while looking through collections for some kind of circle reference, I suddenly thought of his 2004 show named May the Circle Be Unbroken. I also noticed a lot of other references to circles and holes like Prada Spring Summer, the Holy Turtlenecks. For example, in his Spring Summer 2019 collection, he featured some knits that had circular cutouts, as well as a Paco Roban style vest made of huge cutouts that take after those circular plastic rings used to hold soda cans together. And then again, in Spring Summer 20, a sweater that had these huge guitar pick cutouts shapes on the front side. And even as recent as Spring Summer 21, where a lot of the women's wear had these circular patches all throughout. This same circular cutout was also applied to the knees of some of the pants in this collection. There are tons of references to circles throughout most of his collections. This needs further research, however, uh, I'll let you guys know if I discover anything, but maybe if you guys see a connection, speak up and let me know. In spring-summer 2017, the Maplethorpe collection, Raph made a lot of oversized shirting similar to the ones we saw all throughout this collection and in look number 9 and several others. He also introduced many variations of oversized shirting at Calvin Klein. In look number 9, there's a skeleton hand grasping the model's arms. I think this is a hallmark of radioactive environments. Images often associated with radioactivity often depict a skull or skeleton, but this is not new to Raph considering skull prints and skeletal jewelry go as far back as his 1998 show, where he showed various skull and crossbone printed tops. In 2003, Raph released skeleton earrings and pendants, and the Siddhartha collection in 2004, May the Circle Be Unbroken, he showed a bomber with a skull print on the backside. During his tenure at 205, he repurposed the Andy Warhol skulls print, and furthermore, he's known to have Mike Kelly skull banners in his home. Another odd similarity is the resemblance the skeleton hands bear to the hands of models clutching their coats at his Prada debut. In look number 9, we also saw a chunky knit vest that resembles the size and shape from one of the vests from his fall-winter 2016 Twin Peaks collection, but using a different knitting technique as well as embellishing it with these little circle bulbous beaded growths that coincide with this radioactive theme. We also saw similar beaded details at his Prada debut. We saw Raph really flex his knitwear making muscle in the Twin Peaks collection as well as the spring-summer 2019 collection where he showed a lot of chunky knit oversized sweaters. In the next look, the model is wearing a heart earring that resembles the pendant on a charm from his fall-winter 2019 collection where he offered a series of little charms that were used to adorn sweaters, coats, and bags. In his New York collection, he showed an I love you motif that made its way onto sweaters, gloves, and hats. And we know Raph is famous for flashing the heart sign at the end of his shows. Wide-legged baggy pants is something that Raph has been doing since his earliest days. In his spring-summer 99 show named Kinetic Youth, he showed a wide-legged pair of red pants and various color wide-legged pants throughout his career. Earlier I mentioned these tight-fitting balaclava-like hoods that resemble bicycle helmets. Several of these were shown in the collection, but balaclavas in general are something that Raph has been reimagining throughout his career, starting in the early 2000s in the Riot Riot collection, as well as in spring 2002 in the collection with a really long name, and the Virginia Creeper collection where he introduced a sort of balaclava slash hat, but he continues to reimagine them into the present, such as in the fall winter 2020 collection where he showed these thick gauged web-like knitted balaclavas. 
In look 17, the model is wearing an oversized sweater dress that slightly shares the same textures that we saw at his winter men's and women's shows at Prada, thus continuing the theme of sensuality and tactility that was laid out in the Prada shows. Rap has an exclusive silhouette that has been carried over the past few years. It made its first appearance in Spring Summer 19 and in Fall Winter 19 it was refashioned with a fur lining. In Spring Summer 20 it was redesigned with pockets and in Fall Winter 2020 it came with a quilted lining and pockets. And in this collection it seems like it's been redone in wool with a couture sleeve. He has a proclivity for specific colorways that he's recycled throughout his tenures at other brands. He often will combine shades of pink and yellow, much like we've seen him do at Jill Sander, at 205, and Prada, and finally here at his namesake brand. Also, he showed several monochromatic ensembles in this collection that likely hark back to the early 2000s in the collection with a really long name, Woe Onto Those Who Blah Blah Blah, as well as in Spring Summer 2002, Fall Winter 2017, and most recently in Spring Summer 2020. The model in Look 30 bears a resemblance to Christian F. I think that's the way it's pronounced, I'm not sure. Given her scarlet red hair, Christian F is a movie that Raph has a certain affinity for. Also, it was featured on his notorious Riot Riot Bomber, and as of just a few seasons ago, images from the movie were reimagined onto hoodies and pants. Going back to his radioactivity show from 1998, he showed a few web-like knits that were reimagined and made in a few different highlighter hues in this collection. If you followed Raph for a significant amount of time, you'd know that one of his most highly acclaimed collections was his Summa Cum Laude collection from Spring Summer 2000. Raph and David Sims, a British photographer and a hairstylist named Guido Palau, whom he still works with, collaborated on this particular show in their own respective fields. Models were street casted backstage, Guido went to work dyeing and styling their hair, and Sims was in charge of photographing it all. Later, they released a book named Isolated Heroes that depicts the models from the show and their incredible hairstyles. There are some references to these very severe and stylized haircuts and colors throughout this collection. The collection was titled Five Defining Key Words, Ataraxia, Equanimity, Allegiance, Dichotomy, Devotion, and Synchronicity. Of course, I can't tell you exactly what these words mean to Raph, but I can speculate. So let's start with the first word, which is a Greek word that was used to describe the ideal unfaced state of mind of a soldier before they go into battle, where a soldier should neither be too scared nor be excessively brave or bloodthirsty. Equanimity has a similar meaning of maintaining calm emotions when dealing with problems or pressure. In other words, remaining calm through the chaos whether it be a global pandemic or creating a collection of clothes, could Raph possibly be alluding to his approach to his work? Allegiance and devotion could be consolidated as they both imply strong love or loyalty, which slightly echoes the question that was posed at the beginning of the video where Raph touches on the prada and the devotion of allegiance that Prada fans have to the brand. Maybe this question triggered him to evaluate the allegiance and devotion that his own fans have to his brand, thus reissuing the archives and making such a retrospective collection such as this. Dichotomy implies a division into two opposite groups, much like, say, the dichotomy between Raph and a brand's original designer, like, say, Jill Sander, Christian Dior, or Calvin Klein, which then leads me into the next word, synchronicity, and how he synchronizes the two by imposing his personality into the brand, but also could likely refer to another question that was raised during the Prada interview, where he said it's important that he synchronize with the collective subconscious and make clothes that reflect the moment. This was also echoed by Miss Prada herself. And that's it for today's video. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into this, which I have a tendency of doing, but you can tell me if I'm crazy by hitting that like button below, and if you've got any ideas of yourself, you can leave them in the comments. 
But if you're not subscribed yet, maybe you can consider subscribing. It would help me out tremendously. And of course it would encourage me to keep making videos of this kind. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.